So if you're kind of new to PowerShell and PowerCLI, I thought I'd go through this particular script as kind of a learning exercise. Now this script is going to comb through data stores in your environment and add orphan template files, the VMTX files that aren't associated with an inventory object into your vSphere inventory. You'll see the first thing is that we have a requires version two. So we require PowerShell version two or better, which pretty much everybody should have. And then I go into some variables. I went ahead and commented these variables for vCenter, the cluster, data stores, and the folder so that we can tell the script actions later on what to do without having to hard code those entities into the script. Now, if you want to be a purist, you could put these in a YAML file or JSON file or something else external to the script. But I'm being kind of lazy because this is a one-off script that we're going to run very infrequently, if not more than one time ever. Next, we see an import modules or snap-ins. And this is going to determine if you're running PowerCLI 5 or earlier or 6 or later. Because in PowerCLI 6, most everything has been moved to modules. And in PowerCLI 5 and earlier, they used snap-ins. So we're just basically saying, try to look for the major version of PowerCLI. So the first option, the switch says, hey, if the PowerCLI ver version major is greater than or equal to six, go ahead and try importing the module for the core and state to the user that PowerCLI 6 was imported. If there's an error, it's gonna stop and throw an error to the user. Next, if it says version five, see a little five hiding right there, it'll go ahead and try adding the snap-in instead of the module because there is no module. And it will remind you with a little nag screen, hey, you should probably upgrade to PowerCLI version six. Default is if none of these are selected or there's an error, we're gonna go ahead and say, well, I couldn't find a PowerCLI, I need PowerCLI version five or later. And then I've got a catch down here where if there is a stop, meaning we can't find the module, even though I found PowerCLI was installed, it's just gonna say that there was an issue and it couldn't load the commandlet. So we can go further. I've gone ahead and said, ignore the self-signed certificates because in a lab, I have them all over the place. Now, if you're running in production and you want to not ignore this because it would be a security error, just go ahead and comment this out and it won't ignore the self-signed certificates. So I'll keep that uncommented. And then last, we're gonna try connecting to the vCenter server using the connect VI, VI server commandlet. And if that has an error, if the stop occurs, it'll go ahead and catch it and say, I could not connect to vCenter. And then you get to troubleshoot that yourself. Next, we get into the code where we actually populate a variable called ESX host with the first host that it can find in the cluster that you passed in the variable section because the new VM template commandlet requires a host. It can't connect to a cluster. And then we go through each data store in this last little section here. And for all the data stores that you gave to the list, we'll go through each one individually. Now, in my example, I just gave it one data store, but it's going to do three major things. The first is to collect the path of all the registered virtual machines so that we understand what's already in there. So we create, uh, in this particular piece right here, we create an empty hash table. And you can tell that because it's using curly braces instead of parentheses. So we populate an empty hash table, and then we use a git template command to comb through the templates that live in the environment for the data store specified. And for each object, we process an add, which basically means we're gonna add a key value pair to our hash table that is the name of the virtual machine plus dot VMTX, which is required in the next step, and true, just meaning that, hey, it's there. So that template already exists. We wouldn't want to try to import it again. Then we do a search for the VMTX files in the data store. So I first set up just a null variable here where we're connecting to a new PowerShell drive. Uh, the name got from Luke Deacons. He uses TGTDS. I figured I'd just keep that the same. Location is the data store and the provider is Vim data store. And that way we can make kind of like a pseudo net use drive that we can parse through and look for information without having to set up any kind of weird NFS connection or something that is any more exotic than a new PS drive commandlet. We're then gonna search for all the unregistered VMTX files. So it's going to set this variable here as an array because we're using the at parentheses. And it's gonna go through all the child items in the path recursively, meaning just go down to every little object it can find. And anytime it finds a entity that doesn't live in a folder path with dot snapshot, which is used by a lot of arrays to hold snapshots. And the name is a dot VMTX file, star in the front meaning whatever dot VMTX. And it's not, that's what the exclamation mark means, it's not part of the registered contains key, meaning it's looked in the registered hash table, and it says, ah, the file that I found does not match the name in something that I've already identified being registered. So if all those things are true, it'll add that item to the array. Finally, you remove the drive just to be clean with your code, and then you find all of those VMTX files that are unregistered, 
and that's where you're looping through an array of values to perform an action. So for each thing that we find in this array, we're going to do a new template. The name of it's going to be the file name, which is whatever.vmtx. The template file path is where it lives in the data store. That's the vmtx file.data store full path. Scoot over here. We're going to connect it to that first host we found in the cluster using the folder that we specified in the variables. And run async means that it's going to do it without waiting for a return of success. So it's just going to plow through them and add them all quickly. Don't miss out on my future videos. Become a YouTube subscriber today. Do you crave more content on home labs, technical certifications, deep dives, product reviews, and geeky shenanigans? Wall Network is also available in blog format at wallnetwork.com.